Ta ta ta. <coughs> Good morning, friends. It is Tuesday, and it is 10 a.m., so it's time for Coffee and Conversations. Good morning to whoever is here. Glad you're joining me. We'll see you in, uh, we'll see who else joins us. Give them a minute or two. I bet it's Jill. Now there's three people. Maybe my mom's one of them. Maybe Allison's one of them. Maybe Karen. It's Teresa. Good morning, Teresa. Scott have his OJ with him. Allison's got her water, I imagine. Is there a uh, C word that... uh, Works for in place of beverages. I guess I could do Bibles and beverages um, instead of coffee and conversations. Oh, look at that pastoral alliteration. Ah, that's terrible. Sometimes pastoral alliteration is fantastic, and sometimes it's terrible, and it's still fantastic when it's terrible. So I'm glad you guys are here this morning. Um I don't know if you can see behind me, but that's my little, that's my whiteboard. I know you can see the whiteboard, but it doesn't look like you can really read what's on it, which is maybe that's a good thing for as it's going to be in my background all the time. Um, It's got stuff for the um, cuppa. I've never heard that word before. I'll have to look it up later. Um, So right now my whiteboard has all the stuff on it for the, uh, drive through Fall Fest, which I hope you're planning to participate in some way. Love for your help. Uh, less than two weeks away, and we're really hoping to uh, use it as a means to reach out to the community. If you didn't grab uh, invite cards when you're here on Sunday, I'd love for you to grab some. If you are, um, if you weren't here on Sunday and you're not going to be here this Sunday, and you want to swing by and grab some, uh, feel free to call the office and find out when. Uh, someone will be here so you can pick some up. We would love for uh, your neighbors, um, the people that you know, to know about this event so that way they can uh, come and make that connection that you attend this church and uh, your church wants to love on them. It's a, a good way to reach out to your neighbors. So I hope you'll come and grab them if you didn't already. Uh, take them home and hand them out to your neighbor or, <clears throat> sorry got a frog in my throat and Charlie might help me come get it. Um, I've made that joke before recently and I don't remember where. Um, And so I would love for you to grab them and hand out to your neighbors or hand out to uh, families, you know, uh, particularly ones that are unchurched. We would love for them to uh, come and be blessed and know that we want to pray for them. We want them to get a pocket New Testament, which I've got. I'm so excited about these. Pocket New Testaments, um, and we've got tons of candy. Um, don't come and steal it from my office. But these are just, uh, these are like the little Gideon ones. They're not, they don't say Gideon on them because to have a Gideon Bible, to hand out a Gideon Bible, you have to be a Gideon. Um, but they're the same thing. Uh, I got them from a Gideon, but since I'm not a Gideon, we can't hand out Gideon specific Bibles. Um, so, would love for you to uh, grab those uh, handout cards and invite people you know. And then also I'd love for your help packing stuff on Sunday. We got a bunch of candy. We're going to need a ton of help getting that already. Uh, that'll be at 2 in the afternoon on Sunday. And I know you Seahawks fans are going to be angry with me for planning something in the middle of a Seahawks game. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, and I... Da, da, da. And at the moment, I think that's the only thing I wanted to talk about announcement-wise. Um, and I just ran right into that instead of telling you I was going to give you an announcement. So, uh, yeah, I would love for you to be participating in any way you can. We have a ton of candy at this point. Um, I, I'm not going to turn away candy, but I think we're, we, will be, we will have sufficient amount of candy. Now, I would love for the kids to have way too much candy. 
as long as it's not my kids. So uh, if you brought candy, still bring it. We would love to hand out as much candy as possible. Uh, you know, kids love candy. And so uh, we want to show them that kind of appreciation. 4.30? Ah, no, that's like right before dinner time. <clears throat> Telling you, Joe, we can just put it on the big screen and then we you can watch it. And we'll, we can just, yeah. Um, okay, so here's what I've been I've been thinking about. What do we do when the Lord uh providentially puts before us an opportunity? Um I think sometimes we we tend to think about and feel like we need to um I'm wondering what Allison is saying no to. Putting football on the big screen? Um well. Okay. Um, anyhow, what do we do when the Lord providentially puts something before us that we know is a good thing and it's a thing that we should want to do? Uh, I think sometimes we can get caught up thinking we need to uh, pray about things or we need to pray about decisions we need to make when really it's clear that the answer is one one direction. Uh, we don't need to pray about every decision we need to make. There are certain decisions. Um, no, Allison, we, we wouldn't be changing the time of Fall Fest. That was Joe was suggesting we change uh, when when we're going to do the packing party, so it's not in the middle of the football game. No, Fall Fest is two to four on Saturday, the thirty first. Uh, I didn't say that earlier, uh, but yes, two to four Saturday, um, and we would love your help setting up, tearing down, manning the event, all that stuff. So. Um, what do we do when the Lord presents us an opportunity? Uh, do we need to always pray about every opportunity presented to us? The answer is no. Um, now, we are commanded to pray all the time. We are commanded to pray without ceasing, actually. This is what uh, the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5. I, I don't know why I'm holding it. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. That is the totality of that verse. So, when we have a situation, um, we need to pray about it, but we don't need to pray about what decision we'll make on some decisions, right? Like, um, uh, should I yell at the dog? The answer to that, I think, is almost universally no. Um, maybe there's going to be a circumstance where you need to yell at the dog. I don't, I don't know. I've, it's been a really long time since I owned a dog. Um, and I was like a kid, so I don't know if I, uh, yelled at the dog. We may have yelled to the dog to get the dog to come home. Uh, but you know, you don't really need to yell about, or you don't need to pray about whether you should yell at the dog or not. Uh, should you feed your kids? I don't need to pray about if I should feed my kids. Maybe I need to pray about what types of foods I need to see, feed them. But then after I've kind of prayed that through and made that decision, then I don't need to pray about what I feed them anymore. I just pray that the Lord uses it. And so I think sometimes we can get so caught up in this idea of we need to pray about every decision we make that we end up discarding the other faculties that the Lord has given us. Like the Lord has given us a mind, we should use it. So uh, if if you're tight on budget and your your friend says, hey, do you want to go go see this concert? And you're like, Man, I really want to go see this concert, but my I'm this month is going to be tight. Or man, I I really need to pay off the credit card, or I have this other bill coming up. I don't know how much praying we need to do about whether we should go or not. Now, what we should pray about in that circumstance is, Lord, give me contentment in the midst of it. And so, that's just something I've been thinking about and wrestling through. When when we have these opportunities presented to us, uh, we don't need to pray about every decision we make but we need to pray with every decision we make. So sometimes you're going to be presented opportunities that you do need to pray about. Um, should we spend our money on this or this? They are equally good things. There's uh, neither is bad, neither is sinful. Uh, where, what do we want to put our money towards? You pray about that. Or you have two mission missionary opportunities to support. You have two friends who are going on mission trips and you say, man, I I really can't give to both of these. I can only give to one. What am I going to do? 
Well, you pray about which one you're going to give to. And then you, at the same time, once you've made that decision, once the Lord has in, uh, directed and guided your path, you still pray for the other person. And so I think that's, um, sometimes we can get so caught up on, well, I need to pray about the decisions I'm making. No, some decisions we don't need to pray about. We just need to act on them and pray that the Lord works through our actions. The Lord is with us. He is. Uh, he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. And so I think we can get so caught up in trying to run everything through prayer that we it almost becomes a, a paralysis that we just don't act. And now I'm not saying we don't pray about everything, just saying we don't need to pray about every decision. When we're acting, we should be praying. We are praying without ceasing. Jesus commands us in Luke 18 to pray continually. The Apostle Paul uh, in other verses and other passages, uh, Colossians 4.2 is one of them, Ephesians 6.18. Uh, those are verses that commend to us praying all the time. But that doesn't mean we need to pray about every decision we're making or every thing we're doing. Or we do pray about everything we're doing, but not uh, do I buy 2% milk or 1% milk? You, you don't need to pray about that. Um, you should pray that the Lord would use the milk to uh, sustain your body and use it to create uh, bone density and um, and all those good things. But you don't need to pray and ask God, which milk do I buy? Now, there are other things you need to pray about decisions-wise, and you pray about them, and then you ask the Lord to, to bless those decisions using wisdom and discernment. So I've just been reflecting on that past couple of days, and I wanted to encourage you to that as well. Uh, just thinking through what does it mean to pray without ceasing, pray continually, uh, not necessarily meaning you pray about every decision you need to make, but praying with every decision you need to make. So uh, I hope that encourages you and gives you something to ponder and think about as you go about your week. May your week be filled with more prayer. Uh, may it be something that uh, your, your life just drips with prayer this week in light of those ideas. Uh, before I go, does anyone need anything, have any questions, thoughts? Um, I don't think there's any other announcements coming up of things that are happening. Obviously, we would love for you to participate with drive Through Fall Fest, however you may want to do that. Um, I, I think I'm really praying and hoping, like I said on Sunday, that we'll have 100 kids show up, which in theory would be about 50 families. And I, you know, if the Lord does that, that would be fantastic. Uh, that means that every family is going to get a Bible uh, or pocket New Testament, and every kid is going to get a gospel track that is, uh, it's kind of Halloween-y themed, but they're going to get those handed out to them. Uh, they're going to get candy, uh, and hopefully they'll we'll take some pictures of them, and so they have a fond memory of that they'll print out, um, uh, and then they can put it somewhere, and then they can see it, and they can be reminded all the time that, oh, we did that thing at that church. So um, I, I just want us to really use this as an opportunity to maybe make a first step bridge for uh, for some families that are not connected to any body of Christ. So uh, I hope you'll help us participate. Janelle wants to know if, uh, do we need RSVP to help Sunday for packing? Um, no, you don't have to just show up. Um, I mean, it's helpful if I know, because then I know I won't be here alone doing it all by myself. So uh, I would love for you to um, come and do that. Let me know if you want to come. Uh, if you have any questions about it, uh, you don't need the RSVP. Um, but knowing ahead of time how many people will be here would, isn't necessarily bad. So uh, I hope that means you're going to come, Janelle, and bring Reagan and Dawson and Blair and all those good peoples. Um, don't bring Sadie, though, okay? Um, I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, and Siri thought I said Sadie. Siri thought I said Siri instead of Sadie. That's funny. Okay, um, that's kind of scary, too. I might want to turn that off now. Okay. Uh, I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you on Sunday. If you have anything you need, let us know. We'd love to be praying for you and see how we can help you further your walk with the Lord. All right. Stay safe, friends.